Hey guys, it's Greg. Welcome back. And today we'll be reviewing the Udacity Data Scientist Nano Degree Program. There is a ton of stuff that is really, really important to understand about this before you get it. So please watch this. Trust me, it's a really good idea. The estimated time is four months at 10 hours a week. That means that on average, it'll expect, they expect you to take 160 hours total. That is a very long time, so keep that in mind. Now, most importantly is the prerequisites. Python, SQL, and statistics, this is stuff that they expect you to know before you start the program. In particular, they expect you to know, ding, 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 machine learning okay i understand how important this is that machine learning like that is the main tool in a data scientist toolbox but they put this in prerequisites that they expect you to know the un the supervised and unsupervised methods equivalent to those taught in the intro to machine learning nano degree program so before i continue to look at this they expect you to know before before you start the become a data scientist nano degree they expect you to know the stuff that's in this one intro to machine learning with tensorflow and so they expect you to know let me go through this content, supervised learning, regression, perceptron algorithms, decision trees, naive Bayes, support vector machines, ensemble learning, evaluation metrics, training and tuning, and deep learning, because that's what neural networks is, okay? So they expect you to know all that stuff going in. Make sure that you do, because otherwise you'd be very disappointed, okay? But don't worry about that for now. That's in prerequisites, so just keep that in mind. They also expect you to know Python with the data science libraries, SQL, and statistics, and some mathematics, and some data wrangling visualization. So just make sure that you really know this stuff, uh, or at least you know where to learn that stuff before you start this, otherwise you'd be very disappointed. Now, we are now assuming that you know that stuff, and if you do, do you want to take this nano degree? Well, the, the certificate is very well known. I know a lot of employers that respect this. I know LinkedIn helps it helps you promote it. Let's look at the content to really understand if this is something that's worth it. So download the syllabus. This is the syllabus. This is all the stuff that you're going to learn in there. That's, again, the prerequisites. Here's the overview. I'll just zoom in on that, and we can go full screen on this. So use principles of statistics and probability to design and execute A-B tests and recommendation engines to assist businesses in making data automated decisions. Okay? That is a very long way to say uh, you're a data scientist. Yeah. So deploy a data science solution to a basic Flask app, manipulate and analyze distributed data sets using Spark, and communicate results effectively to stakeholders. That is really um, what data scientists do is we use, uh, really, I would replace this with machine learning, <laughs> use machine learning uh, to, to make various models, deploy them, uh, manipulate them. You might have to use Spark if the data is big enough and communicate results to stakeholders is really what you got to do. Okay, so let's go through this. I will keep zoomed in, zoomed in. Course one is on solving data science problems. Learn the data science process, including how to build effective data visualizations and how to communicate with various stakeholders. So course project, rated data science blog post. In this project, you will choose a data set, identify three questions, and analyze the data to find the answers. You will create a GitHub repository with your project and write a blog post to communicate your findings to the appropriate audience. This project will help you reinforce and extend your knowledge of machine learning, data visualization, and communication. Okay, so what do we actually do here? Wrangle, explore, and analyze a data set, apply machine learning for prediction, apply statistics for descriptive and inferential understanding, and draw conclusions that motivate others to act on your results. Okay, so they're speaking very broadly in what you do here, but the main point here is kind of the general data science process. And then communicate it with stakeholders by implementing the best practices and sharing your code and written summaries and learn what makes a great data science blog. How to actually communicate this is very important because this is how you show employers that you know what you're doing is you actually communicate this stuff. So I think that's great. Software engineering for data scientists develop software engineering skills that are essential for data scientists, such as creating unit tests and building cl uh, classes. So they do here mean classes as the actual uh, the software thing. So. This is all about uh, these lesson one and two here. It's all about proper software development, and I think that's really important. This is this is big stuff. Uh, and yes, maybe some people think that to be a data scientist, you don't have to have amazing software skills. I do not agree with that. I very much support that they expect you to understand and they teach you uh, the really software heavy stuff. So I think that's really good. And in lesson three here, web development, uh, build a web application that uses Flask, Plotly, and the Bootstrap framework, I, I think is awesome. So I'm really happy about that. And to build a data dashboard, that is a very common uh, entry-level data science job, is doing something like that and deploying it on a web app web application. I think that's very good. So uh, I would I much prefer course two here over course one, uh, but I, I think the course one is all, pretty much always some sort of an introduction, so, that, so that's fair. 
Okay, data course two I think is great and a great introduction. Data engineering for data scientists. Learn how to work through data through the entire data science process from running pipelines, transforming data, building models, and deploying solutions to the cloud. So this, before we t uh, go into this, I want to go back. Actually, I already killed it. Basically, you in the other degree, you learn about all these machine learning algorithms isolated. Like you understand the math behind them and how to imp implement them in Python. But this is really the whole process of now that you understand those models, this is what you actually do. A lot of the time we have to do these ETL pipelines and in most of the big companies that uh, this is going to be done in something like Apache Spark because we have big data. But no matter what, you have to use these uh, some sort of an ETL pipeline, which basically just means moving data around in pipelines. And that's what data engineers do. That's this. That's why this is data engineering for data scientists. And I actually really like how they phrase this data engineering for data scientists because a lot of people think they're extremely different occupations like data engineering versus data science. And yeah, they are. Are, they do different things. Data engineers are about engineering and moving data, and data scientists are more about using data. But it is also very true that you, as a data scientist, you need to understand how all of this stuff works, and you may be involved in any amount of, of the pipeline itself. Okay, so here, understand what the pipelines are, and then do a lot of stuff with, I don't really count this as ETL, to be honest, standardized columns, normalized data, handle outliers, uh, build an SQL database is more on, on the ETL, in my opinion. Okay, uh, natural language processing. So it's very interesting that they throw this under data engineering for data scientists, they put natural language processing. And that is true because there is actually a lot of uh, data pre-processing slash um, organization stuff you have to do for natural language processing, like tokenization, lemmatization, removing stop words. Uh, and then you'll use an SK, uh, SK learn model to do that and build an NLP model to perform sentiment analysis. Okay, so uh, I always think it's great to start with something uh, simple natural language processing. They pretty much always do sentiment analysis, and I think that's great. Machine learning pipelines, uh, a whole course uh, or a whole lesson on that. Understand the advantages of using machine learning pipelines to streamline data pr uh, preparation and chain data transformations. Okay, chain, so that's what they mean. Uh, use the like scikit-learns pipeline thing that is about chaining different uh, objects and operations together, which is awesome. And yeah, so basically grid search, so to, to find uh, various hyperparameters for the workflow to get the best model. Complete a case study to build a full machine learning pipeline that processes data and creates a model for a data set, okay? So I think this is a really good course as well. I think it's interesting that they kind of put natural language processing in there, and it's not a very conventional spot for it, but I think that actually makes a lot of sense with what they're trying to do here. Course four is experiment design and recommendations. Okay, so learn to design experiments and analyze A-B testing results, explore approaches for building recommendation systems. So course project, design, design a recommendation engine with IBM. IBM has an online data science community where members can post tutorials, notebooks, articles, and data sets. In this project, you will build a recommendation engine based on user behavior and social network in IBM Watson's data platform to surface content most likely to be relevant to a user. Okay, so recommendation engines are something very, very uh, important in today's, uh, many of today's companies, pretty much all the big ones actually have a, a very useful recommendation engine of their own. Uh, most notably, Amazon and Netflix are the, the two great examples. And so, okay, so experiment design, understand how to set up an experiment and the ideas associated with experiments and observational studies, uh, control testing conditions, control and testing groups, okay? So this is a uh, very common, well, yeah, basically A-B testing right here. Uh, it's This is not the, the recommendation engine itself. Uh, neither is this A-B testing here. Uh, here it is, is the recommendation engine. And not to say that this stuff's not important, it's just different. Uh, A-B testing is something that is sometimes used, but I don't see it incredibly common, at least not in what I do, but a lot of people do use it. Uh, introduction to recommendation engines here. So. Uh, I don't think they taught most of these skills before, so they in the other course, so they're going to cover that as well. Matrix factorization. So, uh, Funk SVD. This is going to get pretty complicated. Okay, so I want you to understand that this is this is pretty heavy duty uh, on, on the mathy and complicated side, but it's really important. Okay, so that's another great course. Data science projects. 
Leverage what you've learned through the program to build your own open-ended data science project. This project will serve as a demonstration of your valuable abilities as a data scientist. Course Project Data Science Capstone Project. In this capstone project, you will rev leverage what you've learned throughout the program to build data science project of your choosing. Uh, you will define the problem you want to solve, identify and explore the data, then perform your analyses and develop a set of conclusions. Okay, So this project will serve as a demonstration of your ability as a data scientist and it will be an important component of your job ready portfolio. So uh, dog breed classification, that is going to be a convolutional neural network deploy that model so that others can upload images. This was a, very similar to a project that I did called Know Your Fruit, and it's um, that project it really, really helped my portfolio, so I very strongly recommend uh, this as well. Starbucks, uh, use purchasing habits to arrive at discount measures to obtain and retain customers. Identify groups of individuals that are most likely to be responsive to rebates. Okay, so questions like this come up a lot in data science uh, to identify these groups of people that we care about, and that's really important. And there's another elective, which is a great option. Okay, so four, Spark for Big Data is extremely important. Take a course on Apache Spark and complete a project using a massive distributed data set. Distributed data set, you got to understand these things. It's that's what uh, the real world looks like. And learn to deploy your Spark cluster on an AWS or IBM cloud. That, I think, is huge. And use your skills to tackle any other project of your choice. Okay? So that's the course. Uh, that's the nano degree program. What do I think about it? Well, the, uh, the certificate itself is really great. Okay? It encompasses a lot of different stuff. And most importantly, it really just means if you've done this, it means you've done so, so much stuff prior, like the machine learning uh, engineer uh, nano degree and everything that encompasses. So whether you've done that for Udacity or not, if you finish this, this means that you know just a ton of stuff. It's really hard to get that, okay? So I think it's a great certificate. I think employers uh, do recognize it. Udacity in general is pretty is pretty great. Um, I do think it's a little bit forced to be Udacity, and they throw you in a little bit uh, of a, a Udacity kind of, kind of circle. And what I mean by that is if you go to the prerequisites here, uh, we can see that, you know, this, it's equivalent to those taught in the Intro to Machine Learning Nano Degree program. If we were to go to the, again, to the Machine Learning one and see their prerequisites, well, you'd see it would recommend some other Udacity prerequisite stuff. And so I think all this stuff is great. I think the certificate is good and the content is really good. If you do want to check it out, make sure you look at the link in the description and I will see you next time, guys.